Any day now, all of us will be working from home. And it won't just be accountants, stockbrokers and lawyers. I don't think it'll be long before London bus drivers are piloting their vehicles from the comfort of their living room. Sort of like US Air Force drone pilots. And if you're a lawyer, you've got to win double on your hands. Because not only do you get to work from home, but your business is going to go through the roof as everyone else goes home and gets divorced. Anyway, the point is that a lot of people now need to think about the best computer setup for working from home. That's something I've been doing for about 15 years, so I thought I'd share my setup in case it gives you any helpful ideas. One of the great things about working from home is, of course, the freedom it gives you to work from the garden, from a cafe, from a friend's house, or from up a tree. So for my money, the ideal home setup starts with a laptop. Then there's the vexed question of whether to buy an Apple or a Windows machine. I prefer Apple because they're beautifully made, they work together seamlessly with our iPads and iPhones, and I think the Mac operating system feels less sterile than Windows. Either way though, the most important thing is to get the most highly specced, pimped up, tricked out machine you can afford. Mine's a 16 inch MacBook Pro with an 8 core chip, 32 RAMs and a couple of terabytes of memory, which is rather more than I have these days. That's expensive. This came in at about three grand, which may be overkill for a lot of people. But the more you spend, the more future proofed you'll be. Anecdotally, people tend to replace computers every three to five years. My last MacBook Pro lasted six and it was more than powerful enough to give my daughter at the end of its business life. So it's still in service after seven years, and I'd be very surprised if it didn't get to eight or nine. Still, laptops are not the ideal machines for everyday work. I find the screens are too small and low, and it's just not as comfortable typing on the raised keyboard of a laptop. So for everyday work, I set my laptop up to work like a desktop. In other words, I plug in an external monitor, a keyboard and a mouse, and then stash it in a stand down the side of the desk. Now, I bought a stand from a company called Godspin. Godspin? That's a strange name for a company that makes computer accessories. When the parcel arrived, I thought, God, I don't remember ordering a Bible. Still, they make nice computer stands. It feels very solid. So I'm going to pop my... MacBook in there and pop it down by the side of the desk. There we go. So the next problem is that the latest MacBooks only come with four Thunderbolt ports for you to plug things in. There's no Ethernet port for you to connect your laptop directly to the internet with a cable. There's nowhere you can plug in anything with one of those ubiquitous USB-A plugs and there's no way that you can slot in the data card from your camera. So you'll need a dock. Essentially, it's an adapter into which you can plug just about anything. I bought one called a CalDigit TS3 Plus at the end of last year. Then a few weeks ago, a company called OWC sent me two of its docks, the Thunderbolt 3 and the Thunderbolt 3 Pro. Now, unlike most things labelled Pro, the Thunderbolt 3 Pro really is aimed at professionals, specifically video production professionals who use CFAST cards, 10 gigabyte Ethernet and eSATA connected drives. For everyone else, the choice is between the CalDigit TS3 and the Thunderbolt 3. Now, both of these things have an SD card reader. Both have five USB-A ports for plugging in all your gubbins, both have two Thunderbolt ports, both have optical and analog audio ports and an Ethernet port, and both have a display port for plugging in a monitor. The difference is that the TS3 has two USB-C ports compared to the Thunderbolt, which only has one. On the other hand, the Thunderbolt has a micro SD card reader, which the TS3 does not. And another thing, it might just be that I'm a little bit OCD, but the design of this TS3 is all wrong. The logo suggests that you should stand it up like that on your desk. But then the ports and their labels are all on their side. 
So now I want to place it on its side and the logo is the wrong way. So for me, the OWC Thunderbolt is the clear winner and not just because the company was kind enough to send me a freebie. If you have any SD card cameras, you'll know it's a real faff having to find where you left your micro SD card adapter and then use that to plug your micro card into a standard size slot. It's a really practical thing to have a micro card reader on the front of the dock. By the way, these docks also work as chargers. Now, interestingly, uh, if you're interested in charger wattages, that is, the MacBook Pro comes with an 87 watt charger, but the TS3 and the Thunderbolt are only rated at 85 watts, and curiously, the Pro only at 60 watts. So I was thinking the Pro in particular might struggle to keep my laptop charged, but in normal day-to-day -day use, they've all worked well. Next, you're going to need a display, and I think for work purposes, you want to aim for the biggest, highest resolution screen you can fit on your desk. So you can have your workspace measured in hectares and multiple programs visible at the same time. I have an LG 5K ultra-fine 34-inch display, and it is oh, an absolute joy to work on. It's essentially a 4K resolution monitor with another K slapped on the other side. So even close up, it's so sharp, you really struggle to see any pixels. And the workspace is huge. In fact, it comes with some software that can divide it up into no less than eight workspaces. Although I find that's your overkill and three is rather better like that. Now, the one thing the screen didn't come with is a webcam. So for some months, I've been using the one built into the MacBook, which is a bit of a faff because then you have to take it out from wherever you've stashed it and switch from the desktop monitor to the laptop. Then the other day, I discovered that GoPro had announced that its latest model, the 8, can now be used as a webcam. I'd held off buying one of these things because, well, I don't go whitewater rafting every day like I used to. But now they make a lot more sense. Day to day, I can use it as a webcam for my desktop. But one that doubles for a very flexible, very small, waterproof, wide angle stills and movie camera for all those times when I need a very small, flexible, waterproof, wide angle stills and movie camera. There is one caveat though. GoPro calls this a webcam, which is a bit of a con really, because when in webcam mode, it doesn't transmit any sound. So it's a silent webcam. I contacted GoPro about that, and they said they couldn't confirm that the GoPro 8 will ever have any webcam sound. The solution is to go and buy yourself a cheap microphone and plug it into your OWC Thunderbolt dock. Just make sure it's one that's got a four stripe TTRS uh, plug on the end of it, rather than the three stripe TRS, because otherwise it won't work. Now, I bought this GoPro off eBay for a couple of hundred pounds, which is really not bad when you consider what it can do. And I'll review it in full later. Now, the one thing I haven't been able to find so far is a decent set of speakers. Speakers built into computer screens are never that good, and the LG Ultrafine here is no exception. I've tried a number of computer speaker setups, all of which have added just more wires to my desk. So nowadays, I've connected my Sonos Move by Bluetooth and installed an app called Toothpicks to connect it. Next, you're going to need some peripherals. I use a wired keyboard and mouse largely because, well, I don't like running out of batteries all the time. You'll also need to keep a spare keyboard because you will drop coffee on it and you will drop coffee on it when you're halfway through some vital presentation that needs to be ready in half an hour's time. Lastly, you'll need somewhere to save all your files so that if your laptop gets nicked when you're working from the local brothel, you won't lose your life's work. Lots of people now store their work on the cloud. I prefer a network attached storage device because, well, our broadband's a bit slow and if the internet goes down as it does from time to time where we live, I can still get at my stuff. All in all then, this lot has cost me about 5,000 pounds, which sounds like a lot, but amortized over its lifetime, 
that's about a seven to eight hundred pound a year business expense, which is a lot more bearable. I'd like to say a special thanks to OWC for sending me its docks, particularly the Thunderbolt 3. Um, my Cal Digit here was working fine, and it's a great product too, but I, on balance, I prefer the Thunderbolt 3, so I'm going to put this TS3 Plus on eBay. If you know anyone else who's going to be working from home now, do share this video. And for more reviews of useful gadgets and toys, subscribe using the link below. Otherwise, I've been Arlo Guthrie. Till the next time, bye-bye.